This is Brian Cox. In a popular interview with Unilad, he delved into the intriguing possibility of a superintelligent alien in the future that harnesses the powers of black holes in a rather mysterious way. If a super being in the far future could collect every bit of Hawking radiation that was that came off the black hole for trillions and trillions of years and stick it into a giant quantum computer, then they could reconstruct everything that fell in. And so, what does this actually mean? Could information actually radiate away and get reconstructed through Hawking radiation? The basic concept of black holes comes from how we understand the fabric of space and time, which is based on Einstein's special theory of relativity. This theory suggests that space and time are woven together into a four-dimensional space-time continuum, with three dimensions for space and one for time. When we introduce mass into Minkowski space, something special happens due to the way energy interacts within it. Einstein's theory tells us that space isn't flat, just as Minkowski space suggests. Instead, it bends around objects. So in this view, gravity isn't just an invisible force acting over a distance, it's actually the result of the curvature of space-time. With this term being the curvature tensor, and this one is the energy density tensor, we can observe that the curvature of space-time increases with an increase in energy density. And as gravity is an effect of the curvature, the more energy an object has packed into it, the stronger its gravitational pull becomes. Which brings us to this extreme case, the theoretical concept of a black hole. This incredibly dense object forms when a massive body collapses to a specific size, something known as the Schwarzschild radius. General relativity not only forecasts the existence of black holes, but also outlines their structure through the Schwarzschild metric. This metric is a specific solution to Einstein's field equations. If you're overwhelmed by this equation, don't worry. I've got a simpler explanation for you. You see, this equation predicts that a black hole has two parts. The event horizon, which behaves as a boundary between a black hole and the rest of the universe, at this radius, and the singularity, where the entire mass of the black hole is predicted to exist. The Schwarzschild metric itself is analogous, roughly speaking, analogous to a point mass. So just like Newton's equation, where the everywhere is outside the mass, the equation is the same as it would be for just empty space, the Schwarzschild metric is also one for which everywhere is outside the singularity. When we work through the Schwarzschild metric, it shows us that energy could become infinitely dense, creating a space-time with infinite curvature and an extremely powerful gravitational field. To give you some perspective, the escape velocity from a black hole's gravitational field must exceed the speed of light. That's why you keep hearing this saying, a black hole's gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. One consequence of this is the concept of causality. Since nothing can travel faster than light, nothing can leave a black hole. And so what happens inside a black hole cannot influence anything outside of it. This categorizes space-time events into three types, light-like, space-like, and time-like separations. Now let's consider the event horizon of a black hole. This is a region where space and time as we know them no longer apply. There's no specific where or when. The concept leads to a curious sight for someone observing from afar as a person is pulled into a black hole. To the observer, the person seems to slow as they near the event horizon, almost as if coming to a halt just before crossing it. He never appears to cross into the black hole, he just fades, growing dimmer until vanishing from sight. This peculiar behavior is due to how black holes distort space and time. They tie into what's known as the holographic principle. This principle suggests that all the information within a black hole's three-dimensional space can be encoded on the two-dimensional surface of its event horizon. Just like a hologram projects a three-dimensional image on a flat surface, it must contain enough detail to represent the three-dimensional space from every viewpoint. The event horizon serves as a repository for information about the interior of a black hole. So to grasp this concept, physicists refer to a framework known as the ADS-CFT conjecture. In essence, this conjecture represents a mathematical concept that describes a special type of space-time different from our everyday universe. Just think of it as a decipher machine for black hole interiors. It has rules where it explains how things inside the black hole relate to what's on the outer boundary. In a way, this boundary acts like a map of everything inside. Again, just like the hologram concept we talked about, 
Now, in anti-de-sitter space, big black holes are like eternal entities. They never truly disappear. This is because anything they emit gets reflected back into them, and they continue to exist. On the other hand, small black holes eventually vanish. They can't maintain their existence because they lose more energy than they take in. The thing is, whether it's a big or small black hole, all the information inside them remains intact. None of it just disappears into nothingness. So there's no paradox, and the fundamental idea that information must be conserved in the universe remains valid. Then, when we create a black hole in the context of conformal field theory, we can ensure that this evolution always keeps the information preserved. So information isn't lost, even in the complex world of black holes in anti de Setter space. Now this might be the key to unlocking the mystery of the information paradox. That's a, a good thing when things go from being, they often start out as very speculative, then they become something a little bit better than speculative, conjectural. And the end process is they just become a, a tool of physics, things that everybody uses all the time because it has a predictive value, a mathematical value. In our day-to-day -day lives, having access to unaltered information is very important, especially when it comes to staying informed about the world. And that's why in today's video, we've partnered with Ground News. Just as physicists aim to unravel every bit of information within a black hole, Ground News illuminates every angle of a news story. Their website and app were created to give readers a transparent and data-driven way to read the news. With access to over 50,000 news sources across the political spectrum, it'll give you a complete overview of every story. This is an interesting story I recently read. Lost in space, astronauts tool bag orbits Earth after escaping during spacewalk. There is a total of 114 news sources covering this story with a majority leaning center. You can also see how language is used to show the same story differently. One of my favorite features of Ground News is their blind spot feed. This section highlights stories that are often underreported by either the left or right media. It's an excellent resource for uncovering news you might have missed. This feature is fully unlocked through their vantage plan, which you can get access to with the link in my description. So stay informed on breaking news for less than $1 a month for their pro plan, or receive 30% off their vantage plan. That way, you'll also be supporting Beyond Ideas at the same time. When black holes were first conceived mathematically, there's a question arose among physicists. Could these entities actually exist in the universe? The math suggested that they were possible, but was there real-life evidence for it? It took four decades before we had tangible evidence. In 1964, using advanced X-ray satellites, researchers detected an unusual source of X-rays in the constellation Cygnus. Despite the intense emissions, the object itself remained invisible. This puzzled the scientists, as a typical star emits both visible light and X-rays. They named this mysterious source Cygnus X-1. Kip Thorne and Stephen Hawking even had this famous bet on what the object actually was. There was a bet between Stephen Hawking and Kip Thorne. This, whether or not we actually had the data justified for a black hole. So what was the first black hole? Stellar mass black hole, so 10-ish suns with a star friend and the black hole is slowly eating material from the star. In 1970, astronomers Paul Merton and Louise Webster observed that Cygnus X1 was in a binary orbit with a nearby star. This relationship allowed them to measure its mass. Fast forward to 2021, it was confirmed that Cygnus X1 has a mass 21 times that of our sun, making it the heaviest stellar mass black hole that was identified without gravitational waves. But its mass isn't the only thing exceptional. The black hole also spins at a rate near the speed of light, faster than any other known black hole at the time. Uh, Louise and I published a, a, a paper about um, the X-ray source Cygnus X1, mm. which might be identified with this system that contained HDE 226868. And if so, and it all connected together in this way that we'd fantasized about, yeah. then the companion was a black hole. Apart from their simple structure, black holes are defined by just three properties, mass, charge, and spin. This is due to the no-hair theorem, which tells us that the original details of the matter that fell into a black hole are lost, leaving behind only these three properties. For instance, if you take two black holes, one from a massive star and another from a neutron star, they'd appear identical except for differences in their mass, charge, or spin. When we apply quantum mechanics and consider black holes as quantum objects, a whole new array of characteristics comes into play. Take entropy, for example. The entropy of an object is like the number of different ways its insides can be arranged. 
To figure out entropy, you need to know how much an observer understands about the object. For instance, take a randomly shuffled deck of cards. Describing the position of each card would need a lot of details. In this case, we can say that this order has low entropy compared to this one. But the Nohair theorem tells us that we can't get details about the matter inside a black hole. And so black holes are thought to have maximum entropy. As a black hole grows, its entropy increases, okay? So the amount of hidden information increases. And so there's this very tight relationship between actually the surface area of a black hole and the amount of stuff that it's eaten, which corresponds to the amount of information that that black hole is hiding. Quantum field theory tells us that energy can exist in a vacuum where pairs of particles and antiparticles pop into existence and then disappear in an instant. So even though we think that the entire mass of a black hole is focused at the singularity, these particle pairs can still appear and vanish within the black hole's vacuum. This process doesn't usually have a noticeable impact if it occurs inside or outside a black hole, except when it happens near the event horizon. In that case, the intense gravity can pull one particle in while flinging its counterpart towards infinity. Since this pair springs from the black hole's energy, the escape of one particle will reduce the total energy of the black hole. This escape B contributes to what we call Hawking radiation. This is quite important for our discussion today. Hawking radiation implies that black holes can emit energy, shrink over time, and ultimately cease to exist. This means that it results in a fundamental loss of information. We lose the ability to pinpoint the precise quantum state of all the particles that once made up the black hole. If you think of yourself as information, right? let's say you burn a book um, and collect everything that comes out of the book, all the ashes and all the gas and everything, then in principle, you can reconstruct the book. Not in practice, right? But you can imagine if you collect every single thing and measure it, in principle, you can reconstruct the book. Information is conserved in, in all of physics. In principle, that's what quantum mechanics tells us, that information must be preserved. Yet when a black hole emits energy and fades away, we lose something vital, specifically details about what composed this giant beast. But perhaps there's more to uncover in this story. So, so basically, if you can measure everything perfectly, you can, pre you can predict what happened in the past and what's going to happen in the future. It's called determinism, that, right? So the, the old picture of black holes, and Stephen Hawking believed this for a long time, had a bet about it, actually, is that they, they seem like they destroy information. But you can just kind of see it goes to the end of time, right? It's gone. Even if you gathered all the Hawking radiation that had come off for trillions of years, there's no way you could reconstruct what went in. So therefore, if you jumped into a black hole, you'd be erased from the universe. But that breaks pretty much every law of physics, right? Things don't erase information. They scramble it up, make it difficult to read, but they don't de destroy it. To put it simply, this information could help us map out the entire universe, which enables us to predict basically anything. And so, a black hole is one such rule breaker, since it doesn't follow the laws of physics as we know them. Once anything goes in, information is lost forever beyond the event horizon, and there's no way we can ever retrieve it. So to solve this conundrum, scientists have explored various solutions to this puzzling paradox, each providing a possible way to uncover its mysteries. One proposed solution to the information paradox suggests that a black hole holds onto its information until it shrinks to what's known as the Planck size. This scale represents the smallest measure in our universe, sort of like the finest point our cosmic microscope can see. So when a black hole gets this small, it's believed that the stored information gets released all at once. This idea fits with both relativity and quantum mechanics, but it's not without its difficulties. Here's a point we all can agree on. The energy of a black hole at Planck size is incredibly tiny, yet the information packed inside is vast. This leads to a quandary because it seems the information isn't coming out with the radiation, it stays put inside the black hole. For the black hole to release this massive store of information, it would need to emit energy bit by bit, very slowly over time. In fact, it could happen for a much longer time, possibly even outlasting the expected lifespan of the universe. In practice, this proposed solution leads to the possibility of long-lasting black hole remnants, which may not allow us to recover all the information. Now let's look at another approach based on what we discussed earlier. The entropy of a black hole is related to its event horizon surface area rather than its volume. Again, it's the so-called holographic principle. According to this, the information of a black hole, while being three-dimensional, 
doesn't actually plunge into it along with Hawking radiation. It's imprinted onto the event horizon, effectively a two-dimensional boundary. It creates what's known as a stretched horizon. This allows the information to stay in a space where light exists, which avoids any conflict with causality and potentially resolves the paradox. However, we must keep in mind the no cloning theorem. It states that information can't be duplicated. At first glance, it seems like this rule is broken, but that's simply not the case. Here's why. Although it appears we have two sets of information, no single observer can ever see both simultaneously. One version is visible only to an observer falling into the black hole, and the other only to someone outside it. This concept is known as black hole complementarity. It suggests that these copies can't be seen or exchanged by multiple observers at the same time. Another intriguing idea is that information isn't lost or contained. It's sent to a separate realm known as a baby universe. Here the infinite density of the singularity could create such a warp in space-time that it stretches into another universe via what's called an Einstein-Rosen bridge, or wormhole for simplicity. In this scenario, the information tumbling into a black hole could travel through the wormhole and emerge in another universe. This new universe is much smaller compared to ours, and that's why we call it baby universe. Since this other universe is completely separate from our own, any information that crosses over is effectively lost to us, but remains preserved there. The appealing aspect of this solution is that it doesn't conflict with any established principles, except for the challenge that we can't really prove this other realms exists. But now, let's consider this idea. Somewhere beyond the event horizon of a black hole, there might be a path to access this baby universe. So, if it is possible, what would be the implications? Professor Brian Cox suggests that in such a scenario, an extremely advanced civilization could capture all the Hawking radiation emitted, and they'll use it to reconstruct everything that the black hole has absorbed. If you jumped into a black hole, then we do think that if a super being in the far future could collect every bit of Hawking radiation that was that came off the black hole for trillions and trillions of years and stick it into a giant quantum computer, then they could reconstruct everything that fell in. So actually, in some sense, you come out. One thing is for sure, scientists are still searching for answers to this paradox. Concepts like quantum gravity and the holographic principle could eventually clear up this mystery. They might even change how we understand the universe, or perhaps lead us to rethink our view of the cosmos. Until we find those answers, we'll keep exploring and unraveling these mysteries.